Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Aisha Ibrahim. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa sent a congratulatory cable to Algerian President Abdel Majid Taboun on his country's 68th anniversary on a November Revolution. His Majesty the King expressed his best wishes of good health and happiness to the President and further progress and prosperity to the people of Algeria. His Majesty praised the strong fraternal relations between the two countries and peoples and lauded their consolidation and development. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa sent a congratulatory cable to the President of Algeria, Abdel Majid Taboun, on his country's 68th anniversary of the November Revolution. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister sent a similar cable to the Prime Minister of Algeria, Ayman bin Abdel Rahman. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Gulaybiya Palace. The cabinet highlighted the importance of the talks that were held between His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the Sultan of the Sultanate of Oman, His Majesty Sultan Haytham bin Tariq Al Saeed, and further strengthening relations between the two countries and their peoples. The cabinet noted that the agreements and MOUs signed between both countries will provide a new platform for cooperation that will lead to further growth and development. The cabinet extended its gratitude to the Crown Prince and Prime Minister of Saudi Arabia, His Royal Highness Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud upon the announcement that the Public Investment Fund will establish five new companies for regional country investments, including Bahrain. The cabinet affirmed that this initiative reflects the work of the Saudi Bahraini Coordination Council to support economic and investment cooperation between the two kingdoms. The cabinet welcomed the upcoming and historic official visit of His Holiness Pope Francis to Bahrain at the invitation of His Majesty the King. The historic visit is a recognition of the kingdom's status as an oasis of coexistence through history, affirming the commitment of Bahrain to uphold and promote the values of a peaceful and harmonious coexistence among different faiths and cultures. The cabinet further welcomed the upcoming Bahrain Forum for Dialogue East and West for Human Coexistence, which is being held in conjunction with the visit of His Holiness Pope Francis and His Eminence the Grand Imam Sheikh Dr. Ahmed Al Tayyib, Sheikh of Al Azhar Al Sharif. This important forum is a recognition of the kingdom's role in promoting tolerance, peaceful coexistence, positive dialogue, and cultural exchange between faiths and nations for the good of all humanity. The Cabinet reviewed a memorandum submitted by the Minister of Labour uh, regarding the latest developments in employment and training within the Economic Recovery Plan. The memorandum outlined that 24,444 citizens have been newly employed this year, which represents 122% of the annual goal included in the Economic Recovery Plan to employ 20,000 Bahrainis annually until 2024. In addition, 8,879 citizens received a training which represents 89% of the annual priority target included in the Economic Recovery Plan to train 10,000 Bahrainis annually until 2024. On the occasion of Bahraini Doctors' Day, the Cabinet commended the efforts of doctors and healthcare professionals thanking Bahraini medical staff for their distinguished public service. The cabinet expressed its deepest condolences to the government and people of India following the high number of fatalities resulting from the collapse of a suspension bridge over the Machu River in Gujarat and wished a full recovery and speedy to all of those suffering injury. The cabinet also expressed its deepest condolences to the government and people of Korea following the tragic loss of life that occurred in Seoul and wished all of those injured a full and speedy recovery. The cabinet then discussed and approved the following memorandums. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance regarding the implementation of a number of development projects in public hospitals in conjunction with the private sector. A memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Financial and Economic Affairs and Fiscal Balance regarding the decision of the GCC Industrial Cooperation Committee regarding a number of industrial imports. 
a memorandum by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding the Education Transformation Agreement between the Ministry of Education and Microsoft to ensure optimal use of information and communication technology in education. Memoranda by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding a number of draft laws. The Cabinet then took note of ministerial reports regarding participation in the first International Agriculture Conference, foreign visits undertaken by senior officials and official visits to the Kingdom during November 2022. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Minister of Municipalities and Agriculture Affairs Wa'il bin Nasser Al Mubarak at Gudaybiya Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted Bahrain's commitment to raising climate and environmental awareness through the provision of initiatives, policies and programs aimed at strengthening a climate smart sustainable development. His Royal Highness also emphasized the importance of ensuring government agencies prioritize environmental preservation and resource sustainability when implementing various projects and development plans in accordance with the Kingdom's comprehensive development goals led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness was briefed by the Minister on the latest developments in the Kingdom's afforestation plan, a move to achieve the Kingdom's commitment to reaching net zero neutrality by 2060 and mitigating goal climate change and environmental degradation. Al Mubarak also reviewed illustrative maps of this year's accomplishments following His Royal Highness's directives of quadrupling mangrove coverage and double entry coverage across the Kingdom. The presentation outlined the Kingdom's success in achieving 100% of its annual afforestation goal by planting 110,000 seedlings of mangrove trees and approximately 140,000 trees across several governorates. His Royal Highness emphasized the importance of continuing to develop the agricultural sector as part of the efforts to address climate changes locally and achieve the Kingdom's green transition goals. Bahrain's afforestation plan aims to double the number of trees by 2035, with mangrove trees increasing fourfold in accordance with the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change Goals. The plan also included a number of initiatives, such as increasing the number of trees in government projects, encouraging community collaboration to maximize a green space, introducing policies that support afforestation, and encouraging individuals to participate in afforestation. A number of senior officials also attended the meeting. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, attended the opening ceremony of the Abu Dhabi International Petroleum Exhibition and Conference, ADIPEC, which is being held under the patronage of the President of the United Arab Emirates, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan. On this occasion, His Highness Sheikh Nasser stressed that the Abu Dhabi International Petroleum Exhibition and Conference, ADIPEC, is one of the important global events specialized in the energy sector. His Highness added that such event brings together many leaders, personalities and experts in the energy field, which contributes to elevate, elevating the status of the United Arab Emirates as a leader in shaping the future of the energy sector at the global level. His Highness also stated that ADIPEC constitutes an important platform for exchanging views on important issues facing the energy sector at the regional, continental and global levels. Making it a great opportunity to learn about the experiences of countries in energy resources and to develop their pioneering projects in this field. His Highness Sheikh Nasser noted that holding ADI PEC this year comes at a time of great importance as the world is witnessing an increasing interest in advancing the energy sector through the use of latest technologies which contributes to increasing production efficiency and diversity. His Highness expressed his appreciation of the great efforts made by the United Arab Emirates in organizing this conference which will open a broader prospects for the future of energy in the world.
the first deputy chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, president of the General Sports Authority and president of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, yesterday opened the Gender Equity Seminar in the presence of the president of the Jordan Olympic Committee, member of the International Olympic Committee's Executive Committee and member of the Olympic Council of Asia, His Royal Highness Prince Faisal bin Al Hussein, and a number of officials. أصحاب السمو والمعالي والسعادة السيدات والسادة ضيوفنا الكرام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته يسرنا أن نرحب بكم أجمل ترحيب في هذه الندوة الدولية التي تقام بتنظيم من المجلس الأولمبي الآسيوي في مملكة البحرين أن استضافتنا لأعمال هذه الندوة بمشاركة واسعة من 42 لجنة أولمبية وطنية وكبار القيادات الرياضية والدولية وممثلي المنظمات المجتمعية يعكس حرصنا المتواصل على المساهمة الفاعلة في الحركة الأولمبية وتعزيز القيم الرياضية التي تتواكب مع تطلعات اللجنة الأولمبية الدولية والمجلس الأولمبي الآسيوي أن مملكة البحرين قطعت شوطا في تعزيز حضور المرأة في العمل الرياضي وتعكس استضافة هذه الندوة حرصنا على تبادل الخبرات والتجارب بين اللجان الأولمبية الوطنية في الغارة الآسيوية والتعرف على أحدث الممارسات في هذا المجال لاستعراض تجاربهم وخبراتهم وفي الختام لا يسعنا إلا أن نشكر المجلس الأولمبي الآسيوي على منحنا الثقة لتنظيم هذه الندوة مشيدين بالدور الذي يلعب المجلس في إشراك المرأة في عملية صنع القرار وتعزيز حضورها متطلعين لأن تخرج الندوة بأفضل التوصيات وتطبيق أفضل الممارسات في هذا المجال مقدما الشكر والتقدير لكافة الغامين على هذه الندوة والمحاضرين والضيوف والمشاركين مع تمنيات الجميع بالتوفيق والنجاح والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Attorney General Dr. Ali Al-Buhinin received Professor of International Law and Human Rights and a head of the law school at the University of Huddersfield, Professor Qasim Nasr Sheikh. Professor Qasim appraised the advanced level reached by Bahrain in the field of human rights, noting the important role played by the Special Investigation Unit in this field. The meeting included a tour of the departments of the public prosecution, including the family and child prosecution. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Zayani, participated in the closing session of the meeting of the Council of the League of Arab States at the level of foreign ministers to prepare for the 31st Arab Summit, which will be held in Algeria under the chairmanship of Algerian President Abdul Majid Taboun on 1st and 2nd of November. The Ministers of Foreign Affairs of Arab countries adopted and approved a number of draft resolutions during the meeting. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Zayani, met with the Kuwaiti Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Salim Abdullah Al Jabir Al Sabah, on the sidelines of the meeting of the Arab Foreign Ministers to prepare for the 31st Arab Summit, which will be held in Algeria. They discussed a distinguished fraternal relations, a joint cooperation, and the growth and prosperity witnessed in various fields and ways to enhance bilateral cooperation and joint coordination to serve mutual interests in addition to discussing regional and international issues of common concern. The Minister of Industry and Commerce, Zayed Zayani, attended the launch of economic events organized by the Economic Development Board, EDB, within the official visit of Bahrain's economic delegation to Israel. In the presence of businessmen and women and relevant authorities in economic and investment in both countries. The minister praised such economic events that promote Bahrain's investment and development ecosystem and the outstanding efforts of the EDB, the private sector and economic events in promoting economic development trends and Bahrain as an important investment destination, a strategic business location throughout the region. The promotional uh, programs included various economic topics and events, including a seminar on high-tech industry trends for the Israeli business ecosystem and an introduction and overview of investment opportunities in Bahrain.
The Minister of Industry and Commerce met with heads of economic associations led by Vice President of the Federation of Israeli Chair Chambers of Commerce, Emir Ashani. The meeting stressed the importance of economic development and Bahraini-Israeli relations, which enhances investment cooperation opportunities between the two sides. The two sides discussed topics of common interests and ways to develop bilateral investments and affirmed the private sector's role in both countries, which contributed significantly to achieving common goals. An MOU between Expert Bahrain and Israel Expert and International Cooperation Institute, IEICI, was signed in the presence of the Minister of Industry and Commerce. The agreement uh, seeks to encourage the development of commercial exchange and trade collaboration between the two countries. Under this agreement, Expert Bahrain and IEICI will be the facilitators for commercial and economic contracts, acting as the gateway between businesses in both Bahrain and Israel, allowing for new international ventures to flourish through the cooperation in a prosperous and dynamic commercial environment. The MOU will allow for full participation by both private and public sectors to achieve the common goals of promoting experts and strengthening mutual commercial relations. Bahrain Fintech Bay, BFB, signed an MOU with Israel Fintech Center, IFC, to collaborate on key projects that focus on the advancement of the region's fintech industry. The collaboration will help establish international partnerships. Both parties will play a constructive role in the Financial Innovation for Longevity Forum. The MOU signing uh, took place in Tel Aviv in the presence of Bahrain's Industry and Commerce Minister Zaid Zayani and Bahrain's Ambassador to Israel Khalid Youssef Al Jalahma. The Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs Ayman bin Tawfiq Al Mu'ayyad received the ambassadors of a number of brotherly and friendly countries. In the presence of Foreign Affairs Ministry's Under Secretary for Political Affairs, Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, and the Youth and Sports Affairs Ministry's Under Secretary, Sara Ishaq. The minister asserted that the kingdom is strengthening its partnership with brotherly and friendly countries to develop the capabilities of Bahraini youth. The ambassadors were briefed about the Masari project, which aims to refine the capabilities and skills of youth and develop their talents through a series of initiatives and programs across various fields in line with the government plan and the Bahrain Economic Vision 2030. They were informed about the objectives of the program, which aims to develop the capabilities and skills of young people in general, develop their high skills, increase qualitative opportunities for them, and qualify them to face various challenges. The minister discussed with ambassadors and representatives of embassies the training opportunities their countries provide and Bahraini youth can benefit from them, in line with the goals and values of the Masari program. The Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Amna bint Ahmed al-Rumehi, highlighted the Kingdom's experience in building sustainable housing cities that receive international and regional appreciation, marking World Cities Day. The Minister said that Bahrain is one of the pioneering countries in the region by establishing eight sustainable housing cities in the Kingdom's governorates. She said that the government is establishing and providing 40,000 housing units in five modern cities. Arumihi said that the occasion of World Cities Day is also an opportunity to highlight the Kingdom's participation with the international community in implementing the Sustainable Development Goals 2030. The Minister of Tourism, Fatima bint Jafar al-Sayrafi, stressed the importance of the Bahrain International Airshow, BIAS, which will be held at Sakhir Air Base on November 9th to 11th under the patronage of His Majesty the King. She noted that BIAS has become a prime destination for airlines, business owners related to aviation and aviation enthusiasts in the region and the world. Asarifi affirmed the keenness of the Ministry and the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority BTEA, to invest in BIAS's success as it contributes to developing the tourism sector. 
the minister highlighted the number of events organized by the ministry and BTEA within the framework of BIAS's program, ensuring that Bahrain's small and medium businesses benefit from them. She revealed that the ministry has prepared for the event on the national tourism agenda by promoting it at the regional and international levels. She also noted that through the exhibition, the ministry and BTEA are working to make Bahrain a center for attracting tourism investments to benefit from both the growth witnessed by the kingdom. Board chairperson of the Arab Regional Center for World Heritage and member of the steering committee of the award, Sheikh Hamey bint Mohammed Al Khalifa participated in the 15th edition of the Aga Khan Award Winners Symposium in Masqat, Sultanate of Oman. Under the patronage of the president of Sultan Qaboos University, Dr. Fahad bin Al Jolanda Al Saeed, Sheikh Hamey delivered a speech in which he underscored that the committee sought to shed light on projects that foresees the future, noting that all projects shortlisted for the award are agricultural architectural icons worthy of celebration. Sheikh Hamey bint Mohammed also attended the award ceremony under the patronage and in the presence of Oman's Minister of Culture, Sports and Youth, Dizayad bin Haytham Al Saeed, and Prince Karim Agha Khan, as well as a number of ambassadors and government officials from several Islamic and Arab countries. The National Initiative for Agricultural Development, NIAD, announced the launch of the second phase of the National Campaign for Afforestation for Evergreen in the capital and Muharraq governorates. With the support of Bahrain National Holding Company and its subsidiaries and InfraCorp to complement the initiative's efforts to achieve the aspirations of Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and chairperson of NIAD Advisory Council, to support the state's strategies to increase the green area through coordination with the public and private sectors. On the occasion, the Secretary General of National Initiative for Agricultural Development, Sheikh Maram bint Isa Al Khalifa, affirmed that the second phase of the campaign is a continuation of the efforts made by the government and the concerned authorities in Bahrain to preserve the environment and mitigate the effects of a climate change and commended the pivotal and important role played by the private sector in this regard. More than 25,000 trees and shrubs will be planted in more than 40 locations across the kingdom. I am very pleased to be here at the launch of the second phase of the Forever Green campaign. Uh, we, had, uh, we were in Muharraq earlier today to launch the first location and now we are in the capital governorate. Um, I'm happy to say that the, this campaign has been well received. The minute we started writing to people telling them that we're starting this campaign again, um, most of the companies replied. In fact, for the first time we've had one company take up four locations to be done under the campaign under, uh, and to be financed by this one company. So uh, I thank all uh, the companies who have supported us and I invite others to come and support this national campaign so that Bahrain remains forever green. We're, we're so proud uh, to participate in uh, uh, this uh, campaign which is adding to the, uh, to the uh, green uh, uh, footprint of, of Bahrain. Uh, I think this comes uh, with an addition to the, um, uh, to the environment, both uh, the, the, uh, the ecological environment and the investment environment of Bahrain that uh, might attract further investments in certain locations uh, and becomes part of the overall initiatives of the government. The Secretary General of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, Ambassador Hussein Ibrahim Taha, received the Consul General of Bahrain in Jeddah, Musa Abdullah Al Naimi, who presented his credentials as the permanent representative of Bahrain to the OIC in Jeddah. The permanent representative affirmed Bahrain's support for the efforts of the organization to achieve its desired goals praising the vital role in defending the issues of the Islamic nation in various fields.